So, I'm not quite dressed. I'm in the middle of getting ready for my day. But there's something I really wanted to talk about this morning. I was in the shower just kind of thinking a lot. And I was thinking about... Uh, I was thinking about artwork and artists and how pivotal um, the role of the buyer is. And I want to start this off by talking, uh, by telling a story. I was at a wet auction on Cape Cod. Uh, there's a museum on the Cape and every year they hold a wet auction, which means the artists go out to different locations. Hi Kitty. Potential buyers are given a map of the area and shown where the artists will be so they can go to their favorite artists or all the artists and see the work and decide which one they're going to bid on. Well, at the end of the day, there's a dinner and it was a big event, this one particular auction I went to, and I never went back, and this is why, because of this one story. There were several famous artists there, famous painters, who I really looked up to, and one of them had happened to be my teacher at one of my schools. Like, really famous, people collected his work. Uh, minimum prices were 15 grand, and they went up from there. Buying his work is an, was an investment, or is an investment, like many of the artists at this one particular dinner. Well, his painting came up for auction. You know, everybody's work went up for auction. And of course, the buyers were giddy because they could get it for cheap. This one artist sat at the table, 15 grand. <laughs> Sorry, the construction people are in my building. It's a little loud. But um, minim minimum purchase was 15 grand in the outside world. That, that was nothing for his paintings. This guy was giddy. I can't remember what he ended up, this one buyer, I can't remember what he bought it for. It was maybe 500. Great for him. He was giggling and slapping people on the back and just laughing while the artist sat at the table his head down, picking at the tablecloth. He was humiliated, as were most of the artists at this dinner and at most of these auctions. In the art world, there is a perception that the buyer, the people looking at the art and the potential buyer, is expected to devalue the work is expected to see a price tag of 5000 and offer 500 And that's, you know, if, if the seller accepts it, great for everybody. Great for everybody but the seller and the artist. Who is trying to build a brand? The artist is trying to produce a product that will add to a portfolio, a brand portfolio, and make that portfolio of more and more value, making their work of more value. Unfortunately, and this has been going on forever, people have been told, offer less, offer less. And it's kind of a inside joke, big game, super fun. Except that when the buyer does that, when they humiliate the artist, when they devalue, sorry, I'm listening to the workers, when they devalue the work like that, they devalue the portfolio, they set the brand back. The brand can't move forward. The brand can't be built into something that is of value in the end. So the buyer is saying, I will give you $500 for this $15,000 painting. Yay for me. And at the end of the day, at the end game, everybody's lost. And I come across this, I'm very fortunate, where people um, most of the time see the value in what I do. They understand it is not traditional. It is traditional, it is not traditional. They understand, somewhat understand the technical value that's involved. My work is very layered, very complicated. It's not, what you're seeing is not really what's there. I mean, what, what you're seeing isn't everything that's there. Let's put it that way. It's not the totality, totality the, the image. It's the construction of the painting the products that's used to build that painting, the, the uh, supplies. And that's what you're paying for with different artists. 
There are artists that just go, I will paint with acrylic paint. There's an image of, of a house. I don't know, whatever. Here's, here's a doggy, you know. That's fine. That's a craftsman. That's a, not a craftsman. That's a, you know, oh, it's snowing again. That's someone who does it on the weekend. For someone like me who's building a, you know, really constructing a painting, it's a whole, it's a whole other deal. Um, there are people that use strictly oils or strictly acrylic or strictly watercolor, but their technique, their education, the development, their goals, that's, that's the investment. When a buyer buys, a, purchases a piece of work for someone who is developing and constructing and has a vision in mind, they're investing. What I find frustrating, what I was thinking about this morning, is the buyer who goes, look at me, I duped that artist. I got that artist to bend to my will. That's a $15,000 painting, and I got it for $500, yippee me. Well, at the end of the day, you've got something of very little value. So it's kind of, it's myopic, and it's very, very frustrating, especially for an artist who's trying desperately to get to reach their goals. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the solution is. I don't, I really, I have worked with so many people and no one has said, we are going to get that to that goal. We're going to get point A, point B, and then start reaching for the next set of goals. Instead of, instead it's, we're at point A, we're going to pretend to get you to point B, but we're really going to screw with you and take your, you know, we're just going to devalue you some more and then blame you for the devalue, the valueless, the something that makes you not what we want you to be. So I, I don't know what the solution is, but I really wanted to talk about that because I was reminded of it again this morning and not when I was in the shower, it was earlier than that. I don't know how to fix it. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know how to fix it. I know that there are people that are smart enough to invest in not only artists, but craftsmen and, and, and people, designers, and the hip thing now is investing in an apple, the next apple. Apple didn't become apple on its own. And with people saying, yes, it, it's a great product. I'm going to give you five bucks for it. Or devaluing Steve Jobs, or devaluing the designers involved. I don't know how to get to the Apple part. I constantly seem like I might be on my way to the Apple part. And then the devalue comes in, the belittling, the we will undercut. So I really, I mean, I hate to end it on a sour note, but I want, um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we're so reliant on buyers and them seeing the vision and, and wanting to invest in us that sometimes we're willing to bend, which I've done over and over again. I'm willing to be flexible and bend and hope that you will see where I'm headed and really want to get behind it. I don't know. If you have a solution, please clue me in because I'm lost in this one. Anyway, Joe.